Hey everyone, today we're going to be using Spring along with Timeleaf to create a full stack web application. So first of all, I'm here with the Spring Initializer. I'm going to create a Maven project that uses Java and I need to add two dependencies. So first of all, I need Spring Web and I also need Timeleaf. So Timeleaf is a server-side Java template engine and it basically allows us to inject variables from our controller and then use these in HTML so we can create dynamic HTML content. We're also gonna be using Bootstrap just to give it some style. So now that I have my two dependencies, I'm ready to generate this. Let's just call it Timeleaf Demo and generate that. So now I'm just gonna drag this to my desktop and extract it. So now we have this one file called Timeleaf Demo. I'm gonna move inside that and I'm going to open it up in IDEA, which is my IDE. You can also use Eclipse or any other Java, Kotlin IDE you'd like. It doesn't really matter. So now we're just going to create this in a split screen because we want our browser as well at the same time. Okay, so we have our application here and we have our browser. So the first thing we're going to do is create our controller. So in this example, we are going to be creating a person controller. So we're going to be dealing in the domain of people. We're going to give this controller the annotation controller. And now inside here, we're going to create a get mapping. And we're going to have a function that returns a string. We'll just call it get people. Like that. And we just return. So we return here, we return the name of our template. So we're just going to call our template people like that. So because we're returning this string, um, Timeleaf basically knows what to do. But we have to create that file, the HTML file for this template inside resources and templates. So we're going to create a new HTML file called people like that. Cool. Um, so inside this HTML file, inside the HTML tag, we basically need to use this. Uh, so this basically links to Timeleaf and it lets Timeleaf know that this is a Timeleaf template file. So now that that's done, we can go back to our controller and we need to add a parameter here. So the parameter we're going to add is the model. So this controller is basically, this method is basically called with the model as a parameter. So then we're able to attach things to the model uh, to be used in the templating. So just to show how that works, we can do model.add attribute. We just call it something. This is uh, coming from the controller. Cool, so that's a variable that we've passed in. And now from the HTML file, we are basically able to use that variable. So if we create a h1 tag here, and then we use th text, and then we just pass in um, the variable. So here we're injecting it, and we call it something. So we can use that. And then we can close out our h1 tag. So this is basically going to render the value that we've passed in here. So to try this out, we can run this to see if it works. And once it's running, we can just go to the browser on port 8080. And our controller, the route is just the, the base route. So we can go here and we can see that this is rendered. This is coming from the controller. So that's great, we have Timeleaf all set up and we're able to pass variables in and use them in our HTML. So we want to make this look a little bit nicer so we can create some tables easily, some nice looking tables. So we're going to use Bootstrap. Um, so usually I would basically copy the Bootstrap bundle locally and have it here inside resources. But just to be a bit quicker for this tutorial, we're able to just use this CDN and we can 
put that in our head tag like this. So this is going to load Bootstrap. Um, so if I stop this and start it again, we are going to basically see that the text is going to change because it's going to use the default font used by Bootstrap. So this is going to give us Bootstrap. Nice, and we can see the font has changed. Okay, so this is very basic. This is just using one variable that we're passing in. But what if we want to do something more complex? So what if we want to add in a list and then we want to render the list in a table and each list item is a row in the table. So first of all, we want to add the attribute for the list. So let's do that. So let's say model.add attribute and let's call the attribute people. So what is the value of people going to be? Well, it's going to be a list of people, but we don't really know what people are yet. So we need to create that class. So let's create a Java class and let's call it person. And here, this person class is going to have a couple of attributes. They're going to have a name, which is a string. And we'll also give them a int, which is age. So we also need a constructor. I think I can generate them from here, like this. Uh, so we're passing in name, we also want to pass in age. And we're going to set this dot age equals age. And we also need some getters for these two variables. So we want two getters for name and age. Uh, and I just like to keep my constructor at the top. I'm not sure why it didn't create get age. So let's just do that manually. Get age. And that's going to return age, which is an int. Cool. So now we have this basic person class um, where we have a constructor and we have a getter for name and age. So we want to pass people now into our into this, uh, so it's going to be a list of people. So to do that, here we can use arrays dot as list, and we can basically pass our list of people in here. So we can say new person, and person here is going to have a name of John, an age of twenty. We can pass in another person. We we'll give them a name of Sarah and an age of 22. We'll do one more. We'll pass in Simon and we give him an age of 23. Cool. So this is adding people as an attribute here to the model. So then we're able to use this list inside our HTML. So we want to create a nice looking bootstrap table. So let's go over to the bootstrap site and see where we can get that. Inside components, we should be able to see a table. Um, let's just search for it. Cool. So we can see we here we have a basic table. Um, let's use the black one. So we should be able to see here what we need. So we need a table with a class of table, table dark. So let's do that. So this is going to be table. And it's going to have a class of table. And we also need table dark. So then inside this table, we're going to have a head. Um, so let's copy that. So inside the head, we have these. We're only going to have two. So the first one is going to be name. And the second one is going to be age. So this is going to give us um, basically the headings here at the top. So it's going to be name and age. And then we need a body. So let's go T body like that. And this is where it gets interesting. So we've basically passed in a list here of people. And we've given it the attribute name of people. So now we need to use that. So to do that, we're going to create a table row like that. Um, and we're going to use th and we're going to use each 
So this is basically saying for each of these. And what are we using? We're using a person, which is coming from people. So this is what we injected, people. So this is basically like a, a for each. For each people, we're going to use person. Um, and then we're able to use person inside here. So we're going to use a TD. And this time the text is going to be person. So now we have access to person. So we can say person dot name. And we're going to do the exact same thing again. Let's just make that self-closing. And we're going to do the same again, but for age. So to summarize what we did there, we are now attaching people to the model, which is a list of people. And then inside the HTML, we're basically able to iterate through each of the people and create a table row for each of them. So if we stop this and start it again, we would be very lucky if this all works first time, but let's see. If I refresh, we can see really nice. So we have this nice bootstrap styling. We have a table and the three people that we passed in are basically being rendered in that table. So imagine here in this case, we're just hard coding these people, but imagine these people or whatever else you're storing is stored in a database. So you're basically going to go and retrieve them from the database um, in this method. And then you're going to be able to attach them as attributes to the model and do it all dynamically. So even though this is hard coded, you can imagine how useful this would be if you had a database here as well and you were retrieving records from that. So this has just been a really simple tutorial in using Spring with Timeleaf and also using Bootstrap so you can add some styling to that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.